So, yesterday I got the fuel pump in, fuel pump runs, runs great, good to go. Have a little oil leak, I don't know if I told you guys, a little oil leak, lower timing cover. Um, kind of loosened a couple screws down there, got a flathead, kind of pried it up where it was um, leaking from, and got a bunch of Honda Bond in there. Apparently Honda Bond is way better than the stuff that we use. Um, been almost 24 hours since it's been in. I drained all the oil. It's got new oil. I didn't even get to run the car on the oil that was in it and wasted some of my braking additives. So I'm about to pour probably two, three quarts in, see if it leaks. Well, I'm going to pour that in and then get the back wheels on. If it doesn't leak, I'm going to throw the bumper on, the front wheels, then I'm going to drop it down on the ground and then get it back up because where the jack stands are, where the exhaust goes in the rear. Um, so I'll get the cap back on and then we should be able to drive. But uh, if it's still leaking, then we should have luck. I don't know what I'm going to do. So it was leaking just like just sitting there, not even running. So kind of super annoying. It's the same, that cover, the same place it was leaking last time and it leaked for probably 30,000 miles, more than that actually, 40 something thousand miles. It was a really small leak. This one's quite a bit bigger. That lower cover is a pain in the ass and I actually take it off and replace it. I got to take off the freaking crank pulley, which means the gear behind it needs to be held. Basically, everything on that side of the motor needs to come off and uh, timing needs redone and it's a bunch of really freaking frustrating shenanigans. So, really hope this RTV holds because I do not want it. It's going to be so hard to do with it in the car. I really don't want to pull the motor again just to do this cover and buy all new hardware and fingers freaking crossed. Well guys, it's been an afternoon here. So, um, got the wheels on, retorqued all the studs, got the wheels on, so you torque the wheels down. Uh, got oil in the car, got the bumper on, got uh, basically everything on except for the exhaust and the belly pan so I can check for leaks. Exhaust I can't put on right now because of where the jack stands are. They're like on the frame. So I need to get the car on the ground off the jack stands and then I'll jack it back up, get the exhaust on. But I think I'm going to go ahead and start the car, make sure that the, uh, you know, it goes into every gear and the wheels spin and all that before I go through all the effort of getting it on the ground. So, yeah, I'm so nervous. I had to pee. And then we'll start it. <laughs> okay, so no more time. Yo, okay, so I went live with you guys there for a while, so I didn't pick up this camera. Found an oil leak coming into the oil feed line, pulled the filling off, uh, pulled the O-ring off, and it was basically like plastic, so I replaced it. That's good. Wheels on, exhaust on. Uh, coolant level seems fine. Um, yeah, I'm about to go for the first drive. I just moved the Jeep out of the way. I'm going to put this around the neighborhood a little bit. My rear camber and tow on the passenger side is like way cambered in and towed out. So it's going to probably ride like dick. I need to, if this drive today is good, call tomorrow to make an appointment for alignment. Then I'll uh, try and get a dyno uh, appointment next week. Um, I'm just going to be driving the hell out of this car for the next days uh, trying to get it broken in. And uh, hopefully tune shows up soon. He said I can drive around on this tune, so here we go. I'm gonna pass the camera.
my buddy made it sound because of the longer gears in this transmission that I got. But I can drive around, I can cruise around in a second just fine. So this is good. Seats aren't, what do you think about the seat? It's not as uncomfortable as you thought, right? It's not bad at all. I mean, I know they need, it needs more safety guys. You ain't gotta tell me, it needs a back support, this, that, third, I know. Literally just wanna get the car driving, so. Okay, now we're in our first dog gear. That's the first time going into third and you can hear the difference. Now, hear that? Oh, it says my coolant temp is high as fuck. Let's, uh, pull over. Well, first drive was a success, minus the coolant temp getting up there. I think the system just needs blood real good. I have mostly water in it, so I don't even know. So I should probably take out because it's been cold. But uh, yeah, I just need to burp the system, I guess, a couple times here. I had the heat running. The temp dropped a lot, and I started driving, it, it went right back up. So um, just need to address that. Car dra drove fine. I didn't go over 3,000 RPM. Getting into that third gear, that freaking dog gear, holy shit. That is wild. It's going to be, we're going to boogie. And this seating position actually ain't that bad. I mean, really, I would like to be. A little bit higher but this isn't this isn't terrible I, I really thought I was gonna want to have to raise it because of like the clutch position like how low I sit in conjunction with my leg for the clutch but felt great the shifter is definitely sloppy because of that crappy OE shifter mechanism up there on the trans but uh, once shop daps get here I think it'll be really really nice um, I'm calling that a wrap we're gonna go to Applebee's, have some margaritas or something. It's St. Patty's Day. Um, yeah, I, I, I did have a check engine light come on for the motor, but like I looked earlier when I had one on, and all the codes just said like there was not an actual code. It just I don't know if it said unavailable or something, but there wasn't like an actual. They're like all ghost codes. I don't know if it has something to do with the AC delete or. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. Like I don't know. I don't see why that would matter. It's nothing to really do with the engine itself, unless it measures compressors, like the speed of the AC pump, and that's like, like oh, like your belt's broken, check engine light, maybe? I don't know. I need to look up to see if there's some coding. I, I went and looked in like the air conditioning section. There's nothing in there that I could just click and be like disable for AC, so I have to look it up. Probably a bunch of German coating I'll have to go through. But I'll let you guys know. Already disabled the washer fluid. Um, yeah. I'll let you guys know what's next. Probably talk to you tomorrow. We'll see. Wow. Yesterday was dope. I actually got to drive the car. I didn't get to drive it for too long. Coolant temp started skyrocketing. It definitely needs bled. So I'm about to start on that. Hopefully get like two, two and a half ish mile trips today. I want to um, get it to full temp. Let it cool down. Get the full temp. Let it cool down. Do that again twice tomorrow, change the oil. And I think from there, I can go to synthetic and it's 100 miles on that, then I can, which I'm gonna try and knock out over the weekend and then, um, but there was something leaking under my car, it's just some plastic under the Jeep. And then, uh, yeah, here's 100 miles in over the weekend. Hopefully a tune comes, we can start doing day logs Monday, Tuesday, somewhere in there. Got alignment set for next Friday and uh still trying to work out dino time but um in the meantime before i start the car to start bleeding again uh, i hate extra things in the engine bay you don't need right i mean who, who likes having extra things i don't so if anybody knows how to code out the evap stuff on this please let me know because i would love to get rid or not evap what's it called um shoot whatever the sensor is up here on top of the valve cover that like the fuel, I think that was like a, whatever it is. I feel dumb right now because I forget the name of it, but the rear O2 sensor, don't need it. Don't like the wire coming up back of the firewall. So Vibrant sells a oxygen sensor plug. Got this on Amazon for like cheap. Just type in Vibrant O2 sensor. Um, yeah, so we're gonna slam that in real quick. I believe it's a 10 mil. I'm gonna change my battery already and then uh, also got a new ambient temp sensor from ShopBap and Bracket since I broke mine when I was installing the radiator and stuff. So I'm gonna toss both those in. Hopefully that gets rid of the check engine light. Um, the check engine light is there. 
the only codes under engine are all unknown. Like it doesn't actually give me a code. I might have to plug in the cob, see if it gives me a different set of codes or something. We'll see. But uh, actually, I probably will do that when I start the car here in a bit. But let's get this baby on, change the battery, get that on, clear codes, and go from there. I love realizing that I'm a dumbass sometimes. So I always said yesterday, coolant was getting hot, blah, blah, blah. Well, when I parked the car, I was fueling around the hoses to like squeeze them, to try and get some like air bubbles out or something. Well, some of them were like super hot. Some of them weren't hot at all. So I was like, that really sounds like thermostat isn't opening, but it's electronic. So why wouldn't it work? I should be able to go into VCS or the 11 and be able to like actuate the thermostat or something. I haven't even tried that yet, but so I'm going around making sure that my connections are even right. So this, thermostat plug right there in front of the belt and this one right here this sensor I believe is for the hood latch they're interchangeable hit up my buddy Carrie um, I had this plugged in right so I'm like where else you know coolant I think there there's a green sensor down in here if I can even get some light on it yeah, you can barely see it I made sure that one was still plugged in I'm like damn what else could it be so I start feeling around here on the side of the intake manifold, making sure everything's plugged in. I was like, frick, let me look at the pictures I took of the thermostat water pump housing, see where the plug is, and I can reach my hand in here, see if it's plugged in. Well, sure shit, get in there, feel, it's not plugged in. I'm like, okay, well, where the frick is the wire then? Because there's a connector, because I, I don't, like what, <laughs> where could it be? And I'm like, oh yeah, because I thought that, I remember sitting there thinking, I was like, yeah, the AC pump had two connections on it. it. Makes sense, right? Yeah, so I like zip tied them down there. Luckily, I didn't cut them off, but uh, yeah, it's it's down there. I just cut the zip tie and I'm gonna get under the car and plug it in, It should work. <laughs> then actually bleed the system. <laughs> Got it plugged in. I am so happy now, because I had four codes, one for AC, one for the ambient temp, which I just got a new one today, and I got the Vibrant. I'll show you guys. Did I show you? I think I just took pictures for Instagram. Anyway, I got a Vibrant O2 screw for the O2 sensor, the rear one. Um, yeah, so that's, it was two, 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 two coolant codes, and that code, the only other code should be for the AC, so. We're in the money. All right, so, battery was dead, so I had to push it out in the driveway, grab the Jeep, jumped it, just started it, uh, I had the cap off of the coolant there for a second and it pissed a little bit on the ground. Gotta steal the girlfriend's garage door opener. Let's get it. Let's go for a little drive, get this coolant bled. See if there's any even temp on here at all yet. Oh yeah, we got the heat on hot. We do got a little bit of coolant temp, no oil temp yet. Let's hop in. All right, guys. It's been a couple days since I actually, maybe like a day, since I picked up the camera. Um, I'm driving right now, and I'm in fourth gear. I haven't gotten a new tune yet, but hear that whine? Let's see, put the windows up. It's so nice. And like when you change gears, like I'll go, I'll downshift into third, listen to the clunk. That's downshifting. That's in the fourth, fifth. Like on the highway at like 70, sixth is so whiny. Like literally gonna need like hearing protection uh, driving this long distances. <laughs> but uh, car's doing great. We're at 78 miles. No check engine lights at all yet. Uh, I've changed the oil three times now. Still on brake in oil. Um, car's wash is clean, I'll show ya. Next oil change at 100 miles, going to synthetic. And then I'll check um, spark plugs as well, see how they look. Um, and once the tune gets here, we're going full E85 and start tuning. So you can hear the, like this hesitation. So I'm at like, 2500 kind of hear it like breaking up a little bit between like 25 and 3000 it breaks up i think it's because of the the ported head on the stock manifold 
that's when I think that's about when the manifold changeover happens, the flap in there. But it also could be because I have the 535 pump in without the 535 tune. They told me it'd be fine now. I, I don't know. And then uh, what else? Or something else. I don't know. Could be anything, but I emailed them saying I'm ready to start tuning basically. And I asked them about that wine or that breakup. They didn't really say anything, so I'm not too concerned. Anyway, going to our friend's house. We're going to cook out, brought the dogs. I'll show you guys the car when we get there. It's nice and clean now. Oh boy. Cops. It's windy as shit out here, but she's cleaned up. Looking good. Probably not the best lighting, but. Mm. I should have parked differently so you could really see the carbon fiber. Oh, the sun. This shit's dope. All right, so quick rundown. Last time we came here, car weighed 3140 with half a tank. We're at pretty much half a tank right now, a little over. Um, I've done the whole Verkline, rear end stuff with all the arms and the subframe, all that, the carbon hatch. Um, I've deleted the AC, the washer reservoir, um, the rear crash bar, and the Kirky seats. So I'm hoping like 29.90 would be, I mean minimum, but I'd love to see anything lower than 3,000 would be great, but I guess we'll see. All right, we're out here. Uh, she's on the scale, looking pretty. Yeah, looking good. Cat certified, I'm gonna hit the button, have them weigh it. Really hope it's under 3,000. Yo guys, we went and got her done. Look at that, can you see it? 2960 under 3,000 pounds half a tank without me in it makes me super freaking happy we're actually out right now um, we'll just got home uh, trying to get much, as much fuel as possible out of the tank got down to about eight tank got the gas light on gonna fill her up with the 85 flash a new tune and uh, go do our first pull he said 2,000 to 4,500 and then a little log of just driving around normally um, yeah, super excited. So you guys are going to see all that in the next video. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll catch you on the flip-flop.